Uh, let's get Eddie Guerrero on real quick. We got it, and then we're going to hit to a break because we're running out, of, running on commercial time. Eddie, how you doing today? Fine. How are you? Um, I'm doing pretty good. I guess to start, um, we've gotten some reports on your match with Dean Malenko last night. Uh, were you okay with the finish, as far as, or, or did you get, you get shaken up a little? No, I got shaken up a little. Uh, how do you feel? I feel all right. Still a little woozy, but you know, uh, what, what? not a hundred percent. Oh, what exactly? Well, what just exactly happened? Because I was shooting through the frag diner, uh, his head hit my head at simultaneously as the back of my head hit the mat, so. It was kind of a double shot in one, you know. It wasn't done on purpose, but, you know, it happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's... Yeah, I was more just upset that me and Dean, you know, we usually give great matches, and that was just a so-so match for us, you know. Uh-huh. Well, you've had, a, you've had a, a lot of chances to have some, some good matches with a lot of... Uh... A lot of good young wrestlers in the company. Yeah, and it just hasn't been happening. Maybe I'm losing my touch or something. I don't know. Oh no, I, I think that uh, I think that you've been doing you did real well. Like uh, match for that Matt Hardy last week was real good. No, I uh, could have been a lot better. No, I'm just you know that sometimes 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 I've, I've noticed that the best wrestlers are the are their worst critics, and the and sometimes I've also noticed that the worst wrestlers are. I think that they have the best matches. <laughs> <laughs> you ever, you ever I haven't heard that one in a long time. <laughs> I've, no, I've noticed that, like guys that, that really aren't that good are, are always like talking about how great they are, and then like someone like you or Chris Benoit, like you know, almost you know, will always like downplay the, the quality of your own matches, and you're like probably the top guys in the country right now. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I, I think the run that. The top of the game, the guys that are the top of the game right now, and this is from a shoot point right now, I'll be honest, is Hunter Hearst Houndsley. Man, that guy has impressed me so much. Well, he's got Jericho, I thought was phenomenal. And and Chris Benoit and Jericho has improved immensely. Oh, my God. Uh, Those guys, they, you know, they, they, if anything, they're going to make me work hard in the gym again. Because, you know, I've been real timid because of my arm. And I really haven't been at my 100%. At least I don't feel I have. And just watching those guys work and perform and give the matches that they're giving and, you know, uh, entertain the people the way they're entertaining them. I mean, you cannot help uh, help but help. You have uh, the utmost respect for them. I mean, they're just they're awesome. They're, they're good people. I, th- I thought th- I thought the match with Helmsley and Jericho on Monday was just phenomenal. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, I, I when Chris came, Chris, you know, me and Chris, we we get along good, you know. Um, and when he came down, all I did, I couldn't stop complimenting him because, you know, um, I know Hunter, you know, he's the leader out there, and that's what gives me. He's to me, he's the Ric Flair of the '90s. I'm sorry, the 2000s, right? The new millennium. Uh, he just, he, he can have a match with anybody. And, and the thing that I was impressed about Jericho was Jericho was right there for everything. He had great charisma, great timing. You know, he, he wasn't slow. He never backed off of it, anything. He was there. I mean, Jericho, Jericho's got it going, man. He really does. Yeah, he's put the whole package together in the last year or so. so yeah, he has. He, he's kicking ass. And, and Benoit, not because he's my friend, but Benoit, man, what a talent! You know, oh, yeah. he he's producing. The, the, it, it, it's kind of like a challenge. It's kind of like they're testing him every week, and every week they test him. He's coming through. You know, and I, I mean, how can you not admire guys like that? You know. I want to read this one for Brian. Uh, it's also for me. Uh-oh. It's from Scott Shapiro in Orlando. No, no, it's nothing to worry about. It says, I work out at the same gym as Rena Miro, World's Gym in Oviedo, Oviedo Rena Miro, Florida. Rena uh, uh, Sable, right? Yes, yeah. Sable. And he goes, and I can honestly tell you that Rena Miro cannot come close to squatting 405 pounds. <laughs> he goes, she's stronger than the average woman on the street. But I'm he just, I'm 5'11", 200, and I can barely squat 405, and and uh, Rena Mero is probably not able to do more than 250, which is actually a hell of a squat. I'm but, thinking about uh, the 225 bench, though. What? She meant 225. Really? 
That's more than I bench. As opposed to 225 pounds. <laughs> no, 225s. She was doing benches with 225s with dumbbells, right? Is that what you're telling me? One in each hand. That's more yeah. than well, I bench. That's not. 225s is not more than you bench. <laughs> hey, man. I'm a weak lead. <laughs> no, there was an article in Muscle and Fitness that just came out where it said that uh, Rena Merrow can bench press 225 and squat 405, and I was rather skeptical of those numbers. Well, if you believe that, then you believe that uh, pigs can fly. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against Rena because she's a sweetheart and she's a very nice person, and I love Mark Merrill. He's a good guy. But, you know, the, I think uh, the magazine sometimes tends uh Exaggerate a little bit sometimes, you know. In that case, quite a bit. Anyway, we're going to. Have you ever wrestled European? Uh, no, I haven't. But watching Dave and 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 people such as Pit Finley, and and also, uh, you know, uh, who was the other one? Uh, uh, the, who was it? Steven Regal's partner. What was his Chris name? Chris Adams. Uh, Pit Finley, Dave Taylor. Dave Taylor, yes. Dave Taylor, uh, the phenomenal wrestlers, phenomenal wrestlers, all of them. You know, they just never got their due due credit. You know. You know, in you know a lot of, a lot of people sort of know your background in that your your older brothers were were pro wrestlers. Your father was a, a legendary pro wrestler in Mexico. At, at what age? Um, I mean, you 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 started professional wrestling. What about eighteen, nineteen? In nineteen. Yeah. At what age did you? Uh, gravitate towards wrestling, and was it something you always knew you were going to do, or you know, just you know because of the family? Dave, uh, one thing that I admire about my dad is that he never uh, he never pushed wrestling on us. He let us play other sports, and he never uh, insisted on wrestling. You know, he let that be a choice of our own. But when we did decide to wrestle, he man, he was a perfectionist. You know. And basically, we were representing him, his name out there. And at that time, you know, being the world heavyweight champion and, and you, you know, the junior heavyweight and the name that he carried, well, you know, he was harsh on us. So, you know, there was a lot of pressure there when we did decide to carry on the, the, the wrestling tra tradition. You know, the doors were open, but at the same time, it was hard to, to live up to the name. So it was kind of like, to, it was a it was a plus but a negative at the same time, and like you know, getting back to your question, growing up, my dad never pushed wrestling on us. He, we played all sports: football, basketball, baseball. But you know, you you watch your father growing up wrestling and your older brothers, and you know you get out on the road with him and you live that lifestyle and and you live it and you see, you you just learn to love it. And and that's what I've always wanted to do. You know, I can speak for myself, and I know that Chavo Jr. You know, was the same way. I mean, he's three years younger than me. He's basically like my younger brother. You know, technically he's my nephew, but he's my younger brother. You know, like in real life, and that's all we dreamed. I mean, I remember wrestling. Everybody had jungle gyms in the backyard. We had a wrestling ring. And I remember we used to wrestle. We used to make up, you know, scenarios and wrestle cage matches. And, I mean, we even had, uh, you know, uh, how do you say, uh, ketchup, packages of ketchup, you know. Oh, for, for blood. We would put it on our forehead and pretend we were bleeding and stuff. I mean, our game, you know, was wrestling. I mean, we we lived and we, we our game, we lived and played wrestling. So... I guess maybe that's why it comes natural to us in the ring, and maybe that's why we're so we're so uh, hard on ourselves when it comes to wrestling. When somebody thinks, "God, that's a good match," and we say to ourselves, "You know, that was a shitty match," mm -hmm. because we know what we can produce out there. You know, I, I guess that's where it comes from. You know. Yeah, now you would have been, you know, because uh, Chavo, uh, your 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 older brother, is uh, what would he be um, about? Uh, what age? He's nineteen years, years older than me. Yeah. And, yeah. and and he was uh, in Los Angeles and Japan and in, and in many places yeah. Mexico as well. I mean a lot of, a lot of newer fans, you know, and a lot there's so many people who have come on to wrestling in the last two three years, you know, and, and Chavo Guerrero, uh, you know, the father of, of the WCW Chavo Guerrero Jr. Right. Uh, his father when when we were growing up, um, I mean, what, it was a phenomenal wrestler. Oh and, yes, and, he was. I mean, he yeah. was the top of the game uh, when it came to junior heavyweight. 
Uh, Dave, I don't know if you know this, but he was one of the very few Mexican wrestlers. He's the only Mexican wrestler besides, I think, Mil Moscow that actually held a, t- a title in Japan. And he held it for not only, he held it for like three or four years. Oh, yeah, that international junior heavyweight. That's right. And, he, yeah. you know, he beat Fujinami for it. Uh, and then he switched companies with Baba. And then he held it there for like two years. You know, so he was, you know, my brother, Chavo, he accomplished a lot. He just never got the, the international recognition that I have had the opportunity of having because, you know, of the evolution of wrestling and stuff like that. But my brother, Chavo, accomplished a lot, just as my other brothers, Mondo and Hector. They accomplished a lot, too. They just, you know, they never had that national exposure that I've had the uh, pleasure of having, you know, the opportunity of having, you know. There's, we've got a lot of emails and, and also got a full bank of calls. Um, this is first from Alan Blackstock in Blackpool, England, who wants to know, looking back, what, what would you consider your, your funnest time and the best time of your career? My funnest time? I think I had a lot of fun time with Art Bar. I got rested, so man, we had a great time. Because uh, we were just always having fun out there, you know. And, uh, you know, if I wasn't with my wife and my kids, I was living with him. Basically, he was my family. So, uh, you know, he he was like, believe it or not, when I first met him, I wanted to kick his ass. I couldn't stand <laughs> We could not, we, could, we couldn't see each other. And then Tonio, uh, Tonio Pena, I don't know why, he uh, tagged us up. Maybe he saw something. And, and like, the first couple months, I mean, we were basically at each other's throats. And then sooner or later, we just decided to uh, work together. And then, uh, I mean, the chemistry flowed. And then he was like a brother to me by the end of the second year. You know, I mean, literally like a brother. That's why when he passed away, it was so hard for me, you know. But that was my funnest time. And I'll be honest with you, I'm having fun again. I'm mm-hmm. having fun again now in WWF. This is a dream for me to be here because I never thought I could be in WWF because at the time I was growing up, it was a big man era. You know, you, you would never see a smaller wrestler out there. And now that the business has changed and people know that it's entertainment and it's about talent and they like to see, you know, good, good, solid wrestling out there, plus being entertained with storylines and stuff like that, um, you know, being able to do that in WWF, uh, which to me is probably, you know, the number one company in the world. And I'm not just saying that because I'm working there. But, uh, you know, to be able to do that is just a dream come true to me, and I'm having a lot of fun. I'm having fun in the dressing room, which I haven't had fun in like four years. There's something that I was going to a- ask you about is um, how was the comeback? You know, a couple of, what was it, a year? A year ago. Uh, a year and a half ago, you on New Year's Eve, you got in a really bad car accident, which right. from the injuries, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, I, I, nobody ever said to me that, that you wouldn't be able to come back from it, but I heard those injuries, and knowing your style being high-flying, I was going like, you know, boy, this, you know, if the injuries don't heal, you know, like for, for a guy with your style, you know, well, a lot of injuries. You know, I'll that be can, honest with you, I was really scared. Uh, for the first two days, I didn't know if I was going to live because my, I had a lacerated liver. And I was bleeding. And even if they would have operated, they didn't know if the bleeding was going to stop. So thank God, you know, uh, the, the liver rejuvenates itself and it stopped bleeding. And then, uh, you know, I had reconstructive surgery done on my left ankle, my shin. Then it was like, well, we don't know if you're going to walk normal again. And it went from that till you're going to, it's going to take you eight months to walk again. And then, and then, uh, it's going to take you a year to rest again. Well, Thank God, you know, within six months I was back in the ring, you know, and it was a big, heavy pressure to go out there and produce because, you know, the fans, you know, the fans don't understand that you're hurt. They don't understand, you know, what you've gone through and stuff like that. And your personal, uh, how do you say, problems or situations, you know, they want to be entertained. That's why they pay the ticket. So, yes, yeah, it was a, it was a heavy burden for me when I came back to go out there and try and produce the same kind of matches that I was producing before. When, when, you, when you first came back, I noticed 
I don't, it, it was. I mean, and I don't know um, how you would describe it. Um, your first match back, there were. It would be like on and off, like like you would have one match where it was like technically wrestling wise, you were really good, but it seemed like you were subdued as far as um, you know. I, I don't. I don't want to. Be careful. Being, yeah, I, I don't, don't say careful. Shut up. But, it's all right. I won't be offended. No, 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 no. But being careful, and then you would have matches where actually it was the other. It would be like you'd have a, a really good match, and then you would come back with a match where it was almost like you were being careful, and I almost got the sense that. You know, you know, nobody said anything, but the sense that you were hurting a lot worse, at least when you first came back, than you were letting on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was in a lot of pain when I first came back. Uh, I came back too early. I, I think the doctors told me not to come back that early, but I was really getting antsy at home. I should have waited at least another three months before I came back because my back wasn't completely healed, and I had still uh, scar tissue in my... I had broken my right hip socket. And that wasn't completely healed either. So, you know, I would come back in some matches, I would feel good. In some matches, you know, I was in a lot of pain, which I would favor. And that's kind of what's going on with me right now with my elbow. I know I'm holding back a lot because I, I can feel it, you know. A lot of people say, no, you're doing good. and But you know what? I know inside my heart that I can do a lot better. And I know that without wanting to, I hold back. I think it's subconscious thing and really what I want to do is just get rid of the brace and start wrestling like I used to and just take my chances again you know but I can't do that you know just not just yet I, I, I think I, I need to wait maybe a couple more months before I uh, really get rid of the brace and, and go full bore because I am not I'm not going full bore out there right now you know with between me and you I'm, I'm going about 80% 80 to 90. I am being careful out there. And the reason for that is you got to understand, you know, I got, I got a family to support. You know, if it was just me myself, I could care less about myself and go out there and just give it all for the fam. But I got to think about my two daughters and my wife that I got to support. And this is the way I support them is through wrestling. And so, you know, I do have to be smart in what I do out there. Was it a uh, decision by you to take the frog splash out, or did they tell you not to do it anymore? Or you know, be like honest, waiting? yes, they did tell me not to do it. Uh, it. It wasn't my choice. If anything, I want to do it so bad because I know I can rock it again. If anything, I know I can get higher now with these ropes. <clears throat> I don't know if you've noticed, but like on those Frankensteiners, I've been getting my ass up there, you know? <laughs> and that's probably why I got hurt last time. But, I mean... Uh, I know I can really launch out there because the ropes and they really spring, they spring you up. And I know I can really get up there. And I'm I'm dying to do it again. And my confidence is back again. But uh, Vince just doesn't want me, he doesn't want to take that, that risk. And I can respect his 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 uh, concerns, you know, <clears throat> because uh, he just got me back. And he's got an investment in me, and I'm sure he doesn't want me sitting on the bench, you know. So I what guess I'll get myself general? a little stronger and a little bit more confident until he might let me go back to doing that again. Go ahead, Brian. What do you think about the rings in general? I mean, they're bigger. Uh, uh, the, the, ring, the, the ring is but bigger. I, I, I like it because it, we can do more spots. The spots can be easier, but it is stiffer. Like, you know, like the ben, the power bombs that I take, like from Benoit and Dean and Perry Saturn, I'm not going to lie to you, man. They crush me. <laughs> man, do they crush me. Especially having three uh, compressed vertebrae in my back, you know. But, you know, it, it's not that bad. It's not, it's not as stiff as people, as it was before, but it is stiffer than the WCW uh, ring. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna hit you a break before we go to the break. Uh, do you know Do you know um, Art Bar's younger brother Sean? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, so Sean. we had a couple of questions. Uh, Art Bar's got a younger brother who's actually going to Mexico as like uh, the new love machine, Sean Bar. So there's a couple no, of questions I never, about you. He didn't have any younger brother. Yeah, in Oregon, yeah, I think it was uh, maybe, you know, Jesse Art and Sean. Yeah, Sean, I know Jesse. Right? Yeah. Well, maybe he did, but uh, gosh, man. Yeah. I know about Jesse, but I didn't know about Sean. 
Yeah, he wasn't in the business then, you know, and I think he just started refereeing, and he's... Oh, okay. guessing, yeah, yeah, okay, now I remember, okay, yes, he Yeah, did. I think he's probably early 20s right now. Okay. Got a ton of emails and a bunch of phone calls as well for Eddie. Before we start, I got this from Scott Keith, who said, You've forgotten the funniest thing on the Hogan show last night. When Hogan was talking about his heel face, he said, With a straight face, that Hollywood couldn't hold on to a title if his life depended on it, and he would always lose it after a few days. I guess that one-year title reign, 96 and 97 only counts as a few days. So anyway, I mean, I I was just like kind of okay. That's what Hogan said. The whole thing was whatever. Um, let's let's start hitting the worst uh, buy rate ever, huh? What the one Sunday? Yeah. I haven't heard Sunday's buy rate yet. I heard it was um, the worst, even even the worst. That they may not necessarily be good. That's what I heard. I don't know how true it is. Uh, I, I mean, I, I haven't. I don't know. I, I haven't heard a number for that one, but uh, I was, boy, if in that's your true. Personal opinion. How was the pay per view? Not good. Um, Not good. No, no. Yeah, the, um, the, you know what? And and I know this is going to sound really ironic, but I feel for those guys because a lot of those guys are my friends, and I want to see them succeed. You know, especially my nephew. But those guys, I mean, they say they're going to turn things around, and they put up a front like they are turning things around, but it's basically the same thing, Dave. It's just it in a different way, you know? How, how can you do that? I mean, how can you do that to the boy? How can you do that to the business? If the business has given you so much, if the business has, has made you, I don't want to name a person or a particular name, but you know who I'm talking about. But if the business has given you so much money, you know, and believe me, he did not make wrestling. There was a lot of people before him that wrestled and made a lot of money and that paid his way there. But if the business made so much money for you and your family and friends and friends around you, how can you be so greedy to to hurt other guys that are trying to make a living out of it? To hurt other guys that are trying to climb their way up uh, and keep other guys down how can you do that i mean doesn't that doesn't is that am i wrong by saying that no because you know, if i'm wrong please correct me no you know the other thing is is you you know you lived you lived through it for like three four years i mean you and and you know i mean i, I know, don't know i know i know but you know i just I, the way you think about it dave i mean dave this business has given him everything yeah not only him a lot of other people up there and instead of giving back they want to take more and they want to kill it I th I think that it's it's a, it's it's a game of manipulation that they want to play and you know now that they have you know you, you know like it's like they all went through you know no one no one's making for the most part um, with a few exceptions, most of the guys now are making more money than, than anyone's ever made in, in, in wrestling. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these guys that have been around for 20 years, they had, you know... You know, I will give him that. He did open the doors for that, and I thank yeah. him for that. And I will yeah. personally stand here and thank Paul Hogan for opening the doors and allowing me to have a better living for my family by him opening the doors and, and, and doing that. But at the same time, now he's doing the complete opposite. Yeah, you know what well, I mean. I mean, well, even you, you know, uh, take yourself out of the picture and look at people who you know, and then just like for for just throwing a name, Chris Benoit. Since instead of we'll talk instead of talking about Eddie Guerrero, we'll talk about Chris Benoit because we all know Chris Benoit, and he was there for three, four years, and 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 we know what happened to him, or or, or even Jericho, because for all they want to say about well, Chris may not be a great interview, so he's missing that piece. It's like so Chris what? Jericho. I mean, they're great wrestlers. Yeah, you know? they're great wrestlers. Okay, and, and the interview can come. It's just like, uh, all right, uh, Hulk Hogan's a great interviewer, but he can't wrestle worth a shit. Yeah. He couldn't even tie Chris Benoit's shoelaces. So tell me, how does that even out? Because he's a great interviewer that makes him better to make all the money. And Chris Benoit goes out there and busts his ass and does all the hard work, and he's a workhorse. You know, that way they can come out and do their interview. I mean, how does that make that fair? Well, I think I think part of it is is that is that if they were able to keep you or Chris Benoit or or even a Chris Jericho out of that top spot, 
they could wrestle each other kind of that easy style or easy I don't want to say anything's easy easier style yeah. than you guys do and, and and if they can maintain that the main event style is easier uh, without you know with, without guys who are pushing them you know because you're not going to go in there and just yeah. lay down and just yeah. not do a match yeah and and, and you know because you're motivated to do your kind of match and right. Benoit's very well, motivated the thing to do is Dave that, that you, you got a Chris Benoit okay a Dean Malenko uh, the uh, other people they can adjust to their style of wrestling. They don't have to do our style of wrestling. Our style of wrestling, see, that's what a lot of people don't understand. And you and you yourself are a witness, Dave. We can go out there and do any kind of style. If they want a Mexican style wrestling match, we'll give them a Mexican style wrestling match. If they want American style, we'll give them American. If they want Japanese, we'll give them Japanese. We can wrestle it all. That's what these guys don't understand. And by them blocking us, what they don't understand is that if they would have given us the opportunity to come up there and work with them, I think they would have prolonged their career because it creates more interest and it would have given them different people to work with. Instead of blocking us and keeping us down, you know, to where we don't even want to be there, to where we didn't even want to show up to work. I mean, I grew up in this business, Dave. I mean... Loving it, living it, dreaming it, eating it, you know, doing the, excuse my language, but shitting it. You know what I mean? And for me, uh, the only happiness that I had was when I was inside the ring. When I was inside the ring, see, nobody can take that away from me. No promoter, uh, no wrestler, nobody can take that away from me except God, because that's a God-given gift. You know, whether it be one minute or whether it be 20 minutes or an hour, you know, that's mine. Uh, but outside of the ring, it was a living hell. It became a living hell. Inside the dressing room, I mean, you didn't know whether to smile, whether to be happy or all that. And what they're, what they're trying to do now is they're trying to make it, you know, happy again, and they're trying to make it good again. But you tell me... You know, they did that for the first couple, I guess, maybe a month or two, and now they're making it into a ridiculous show. Uh, that's my opinion. You know, well, I, I mean, I, I have liked a few of their shows. I've probably disliked more than I've liked. And, but I mean, I think one of the things that I miss, and Brian and I talk about this on almost every show, is that they rarely have a good wrestling match, and it's not because they don't have good wrestlers. Because Eddie, you know better than anyone. You, you know, took I mean, the words right out of my mouth. I mean, we could we could name ten, twelve guys that are really talented wrestlers there, but yes. they never wrestle each they never wrestle each other. And yes. if they do, it's ruined by a run in in ninety seconds. So what does it matter? And right. I mean, they're trying to recreate what they had three years ago, but well, I don't see, think they're they not even doing that. They had. You know what they forgot? They forgot the fundamentals. What the, what the, what what's it called? Wrestling. You still got to have some kind of wrestling in there, guys. I don't care how much of a show it becomes. You still got to have some wrestling in there. You know, you know, there's, there's one thing that that uh, everyone for I don't want to say forgets because Steve, Steve Regal brought this up yesterday, is that during that period when when WCW was was beating WWF in the ratings every Monday night, there was a formula there, and the NWO was part of the formula, and everyone Hulk Hogan was a big part of the formula, absolutely. Right. But they had great wrestling matches. I mean, Brian, you remember every Monday night? Every I mean, Monday I remember. Night, they had the Lucha match, or they just had. Benoit and Eddie or Malenko, awesome matches. I can tell you, Monday night, I used to look forward to 5 o'clock. I mean, I was excited because Nitro was going to start, and there would be a little bit of everything for everyone. I mean, I could see Ultimate right. Dragon, and I could exactly. see Rey Mysterio Jr., Eddie Guerrero, Psychosis, and, the, the, you know, they, they, you get good wrestling, you got Ric Flair to do interviews. A little you're bit so of right. They had a little bit of everything for everybody, right? And you're absolutely right. That's what made Nitro so good is that they gave a variety. And I think that's what WWF has now, a variety, you know. Vince had to go that way, you know. He had to get rid He had to, uh, you know, he still has his big men, you know, and, and I know he still believes in that in certain ways, but he's also changed to the point that he knows he needs to have wrestling matches in there, you know. Which is uh, where where Chris Benoit comes in, uh, Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn, uh, other good wrestlers like Bell Venus, good Chris Jericho. You know, I can go on and on. You know, and it's kind of switch roles, don't you think? 
Yeah, the other, the other thing is, is that, is, is that there, there really are not, you know, most of the guys in WWF right now are guys that you could have a match with, and then, the, you know, the other, the few guys that aren't quite as good, you know, they know how to use them effectively, too, and they're not the dominant, they're not in the dominant position either. Mm-hmm. You know, they're just, you know, like, if, if the Godfather, you know, the Godfather's ring entrance, so he does his ring entrance, and everyone goes up for it because it's it's part of the show, and they love that part of the show. Oh, yeah, he's great but, but at what he does. Yeah, right, exactly, but it's not like, you know, they're not asking him to do what he can't do, and, you know, no one's, I mean, no one's stinking out the joints, if you know what I mean. Right, right. Yeah, we've got to hit the calls, because we've got a, a full bank here, and we've been... Sure, man. Into let's, let's go to Hector in Texas, you're first up with Eddie. Yeah, Eddie, I'm from El Paso, uh, and I'm a big fan of yours, I wanted to know... I'm sorry, Hector, I was at the house a little bit of talk to you. And I just wanted to ask you, um, what do you think about the reaction you got in that show? Oh, he, he's, he, he's asking Cruces. about. He, he was in Los Cruces at the show the other night. Oh God, God, uh, it sent chills up my spine. I just wish I could have had more time, you know, to wrestle. Uh, God, how can I not be excited and thrilled about that reaction? You know, you go to your hometown, and they're chanting your name, even though you're you, you may be a bad guy or or a good guy or whatever, and they're you're, they're chanting your name. How can you not like it, you know? And especially being at hometown, you know, yeah, man, it, it was a great throw for me. And another question is, and this is my last question, if you could bring a few guys from WCW uh, other than your cousin, who would you bring, you know, to the WWF? Who would I bring to WWF? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know this sounds really bogus, but I would bring my, 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 my nephew, Chavo. <laughs> he he I mean, said, said Chavo. Uh, I, w- I would bring Billy Kidman. Uh, I would bring Ray Ray, Ray Mysterio Jr. And uh, who else would I bring? Uh, God, uh, a lot of respect for him. Um, I would like to see Kurt Henning back. You know, Kurt Henning, if they would give Kurt Henning the opportunity to go out and perform the way he can and has before. He was a hell of a performer, you know. So I would, you know, those are people that I admire, that I respect, that I would like to have friends of mine, Conan, you know, obviously. Uh, just a lot of people that I used to hang out with, you know. I think Hugh, Hugh Morris is a hell of a talent that's not being utilized like they should, you know. But, you know, who who am I to say that? You know, obviously I'm not the booker and... And I'm a, I'm only a wrestler, and and they're the ones that are the geniuses because if they, if they if they weren't geniuses, they weren't they wouldn't be making the money they're making, and they wouldn't be producing what they're producing, you know. Uh, uh, thanks, Eddie. Sure, yeah, he's you're representing you Latino on El Paso. Thank Bye. you. Okay, um, real quick before we go to the next call, I've got this because it actually popped in my head, and we've gotten a couple of emails about this. Is ba- the basic just is. Looking back, I mean, you again, we've talked about, you know, wrestling, you know, main events in Mexico, a lot of great matches in Japan, uh, WCW, WWF. If you look back now, what are your your favorite wrestling matches that you had during your career, if it's like a series or or um, uh, a specific match or whatever? Uh, against Chris Benoit. I had some real good matches against Chris Benoit in Japan, and I had a couple of good ones here in the States with him. Also, Dean Malenko, uh, the Dean Malenko matches in ECW. And we had some good ones in WCW, and obviously the one with Ray Mysterio Jr. in Halloween Havoc. I think yeah, that was Vegas. an awesome mask match. Versus title. Yeah, the mask match, yeah. Yeah, the mask the match. T- the, 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 the one that I always remember is the one in L.A. with you and Art Barr oh, against uh, Santo Of Hockey. course, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for that. But, I mean, that was that's the number one, man. I mean, how can you forget that? Santo and Octagon against me and Art for our hair. Jeez, what else do you want? And Art, Art just stole the show. He was a man. Art was a man. God rest his soul, but he was a man. You know, I, I have nothing. Uh, a lot of my success I owe to him. He, you know? did you, did you, cause I noticed some of your mannerisms and everything. Did you, you picked up a lot, uh, you know, a lot of his stuff. You know what Art taught me, uh, Dave? Not to be shy. Not to be shy in front of the camera. Let it out. So, like, you know, you, you you see that Latino heat, you know, a lot of people say I'm being stereotyped and stuff like that. 
uh, believe me or not, you know, that's really a Chicano, you know. That's what I am, but basically is I, I don't have the accent. But you go to El Paso, where I grew up, a lot of guys talk like that, man, you know. We get that accent, you know, and it, it, it's not being stereotyped. I mean, that's what I am, and I'm portraying that just in a in a fun way. That's all I'm doing, you know, and uh, that comes from art. Art, I would have never been able to do that if I didn't tag team with art. Art, art brought, let, uh, you know, I was so serious about wrestling, and I believed in just, being straight out wrestler in the ring, I never believed in in how do you say portraying to the people and making it entertaining to the people until I saw Art and you know I would look at him and I was going, God, why is he getting paid double more than I am and I'm busting my ass, you know, and he's making more money and people love him more than I do. <laughs> then I mean, then they do me. And it's just because he was just, he had charisma, and he knew how to make the people laugh, cry, uh, mad, and, and anything he wanted to do. And, you know, you know who else taught me a lot of that was Negro Casa. You know, just two great showmen that could go out there and wrestle and do it all. And if anything, you know, I owe a lot of my stuff to art. You know, not not that I have a lot of great stuff, you know, but I mean... What I do have, art, is a big part of it. Let's let's go to Western Virginia. Wes, you're next up with Eddie. Hi, guys. Uh, Eddie, I wanted to ask you earlier, you brought up a point about how, like, in the mid-'90s, it got more back into wrestling. What are some of the things you thought brought it back and away from kind of like the big, uh, I guess, steroided-up kind of guys that was in the mid-'90s? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, repeat yourself. He basically was going like what, you know, like it's it's gotten so much more, especially in WWF, uh, there's more. It's a lot more wrestling oriented. Part, part, you know. I mean, I, you know, okay. Well, let me ask you this question: uh, uh, How many times can you see somebody go out there and pose, yeah. and then <laughs> run and hit the rope and hit a tackle and not fall down? I don't, I don't know because I haven't been to a bodybuilding contest in years. How many times can you see that? Yeah. And you saw that basically for ten years. I mean, in different ways, but that's what you saw, right or wrong. Yeah, well, it was with it was exception a, with an exception of few wrestlers. I'm not saying yeah. every wrestler was like that, but I would say 80 percent of them were. You know, and I think people got tired of seeing that, and people wanted to be see wrestling again. You know, maybe not the American grab a hold, you know, work it, you know, drop down tackle, get it again. You know, but I think more of the Japanese style that Chris Benoit, Dean Malenko brought, you know, uh, Jericho brought to the States, you know, where you get a little bit of everything, a little bit of flying, a little bit of mat wrestling, and a little bit of rocking and rolling, punch and kicking, suplexes, and stuff like that. Just a combination of everything, which entertains the people. And then you got your big men that come out there and kick ass. And then you got your guys that are great interviewers. Such as The Rock, uh, Ric Flair, you know, uh, people that can just turn it on on the mic, you know, and, and that's what wrestling is now. It's just a great around all around entertainment show. It's a it's a physical soap opera. That's what it is, really. If you look at it. Anything else, Wes? Yeah, I wanted to ask the one more for Eddie. Uh, a couple years back in WCW, you and Chris Jericho got to be a tag team for a couple weeks, and it really seemed like it was starting to get over in the rug. Oh, God, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's, it's like, this is like one of my pet peeves. Up. <laughs> I just wonder what happened uh, with you two there. No, you know what happened? Um, they knew it was going to get over, so they <laughs> Now That's the truth. God, honest truth. Do you guys, do you guys remember? I mean, always here. Wes, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't know if you remember this or not, but um, this was this this actually wasn't with Eddie, but this was when Ray and Hooventude teamed up about two times on television. Sure. And, and, and it started getting over. Uh, I, really, I, I just remember writing this like I go, these guys have so much charisma, Ray and Hooventude, as a team together that I know that by writing this, I'm never going to see them to team yeah. again. <laughs> and, and, and actually, actually, believe it or not, I think they're supposed to team up Monday, but really? up until Monday, they never teamed again. <laughs> 
<laughs> I was yeah, like, oh. You, you know what? Uh, when, when you got something good, you scare the guys on top. And when you scare the guys on top, they're the first ones that are going to go out and have an egg. And if, if I ever get a chance to tag team with Jericho, I know we'd be a good tag team. You know, uh, I think it'd be kind of... I, I cannot compare Jericho to Art because there's only one Art bar. But I know me and Jericho can create our own different style of tag team. You know, that would entertain the people. You know, but uh, Jericho's so over with the people now that they love him, you know. And me, I'm kind of like what you call a tweener. They love China, but they don't like me. You know, they still want to hate me. They still want to see me as a bad guy. And I believe that a lot of people think, what the heck is China, you know, this awesome-looking woman, you know, doing with a dweeb like Eddie Guerrero. <laughs> and I think there's mixed emotions, and I think that's, that's where I'm stuck right now, you know. I we, think we, that if, if I were to get one solid direction, either uh, uh, I think I'm a better heel than I am a baby face. But I, I think that if they would just let me go heel 100% and do my thing, that I could really rock and roll. Okay, guys, now it's time for WF Daily Trivia. Here's today's question. And what a coincidence this is. Who, who knew this, what the conversation was going to be like today? When Hulk Hogan was WWF champion, I think it was actually the last time he was WWF champion, he, he was said uh, on a tour that the WWF belt was like a Christmas tree ornament in compared to a real world championship belt or a certain belt. Which belt was he referring to? Those of you who were around uh, in 1993 will probably remember there was actually a bit of controversy about this at that time. So anyway, uh, that's today's question. Uh, before we get back to Eddie Guerrero, this is actually from Chris Hussein, who says, uh, actually has a question also, but uh, it, says, it says, the a &E interview opened my eyes so much about Hulk Hogan. I think we should we, we all come down too hard on the guy like they said we do. What we as fans should do is give him a parade at least once a month, just like they did in the interview. Uh, I was thinking back to the whole Hulk Hogan deal and, I was thinking, if I were Hulk Hogan, why would I even want to face the same guys for like three years in a row? I know, there's like Wasn't so that much. so boring? Oh, here's another match with Savage. I've had 45 in the last year. Yeah, but they, you know, I mean, you know, you know, part of what part of it is 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 um, Hogan and Savage drew big money in the past, and and and, in any, and even in recent years, and it's oh, one of those yeah, things yeah. where. Where, where Hogan thinks in his mind, it's like, I can always go back to Savage. I can always go back to Piper. I can always go back to Flair because those are money matches. And he, he respects those guys because they were money players. And the other guys, you know, he can always go in there and say, well, they've never proven in this country to be money players. But the point is, as we all know, is that unless you're put in the position to be in that, unless you're put in that position, you can't be in that position. And it's 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 like, it's a weird catch-22. I understand too. that part. I mean, it's just like... Having to have the same matches, though. Well, I don't know. Maybe we should get him on the show and, and ask him. Could we do um, that? I want, I want to ask one real quick question before we get to the calls. The car, the love machine, does that have anything to do with Art Bar, or is it just like a, the Latino using the term love machine for, well, for the car? Both. It was it's both. both. You know, uh, it was there, so I used it, and I always want to have art in, 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 my, in my life in one way or another. And, uh, you know, if I can throw that in, you know, uh, you know, why not? You know, it fit the bill, too, so, you know, uh, yes, it, w it was both, you know. It was there, and it was done for him, too. Okay. Let's let's go to Matt in San Francisco. Matt, you're up with Eddie Guerrero. Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, Matt. How are you? How are you? All righty. Uh, just a quick comment for you, Dave. I am so glad you brought Zach Arnold on board. Okay, that guy um, is... It when it comes to Japanese reporting. Is he is he something I don't know? I mean I, I mean I've I've been emailing Zach Arnold back and forth, but I don't know how the, the you know all the negotiations with the the website have gone. Well, he was on the website today. Oh, that's awesome. There's an Gosh, update. Nobody, Brian. Nobody ever tells me anything. Come on, Chico, get it together, buddy. <laughs> but do you know this, Brian? I think or you do because I saw no. him there. Nobody ever tells me anything. Oh my God. Okay. Well, that's cool. <laughs> anything yeah. involving the website that Dave does not know about, you should not be shocked about. I, I don't know anything. No one tells me anything. I, I don't know. I, I have this feeling I have this Yahoo chat at 6 just because it's in, the, in my bones that it's Wednesday and no one said a word, so it must be true. Oh, you do, I think. I got one. Hey, that was pretty good. I got a plug-in for that. But no, I... <laughs> Dave, 
Well, yeah. now that now that you have Zach on the roster, what do you think about having him phone in, you know, a couple of days a week for the show? Uh, that's not a bad idea. That's, that's that's a real good idea. Yeah, we should we should get him on and talk about Japanese wrestling, especially, you know, this week. God, no, you know, with everything that went on down there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, one question for you, Eddie. What are your feelings about Conan, Bob Barnett, and Vampiro? Uh, what are my feelings about Conan? Who? Bob Barnett and Barnett. Bob Barnett and Vampiro. Okay. Uh, Bob Barnett. Who's that? That's he may not Vampiro's know Bob. Boy. Bob's a Bob's like he's he's Vampiro's business manager. He's, oh, okay. Uh, you, you, you've probably met him in Los Angeles. I'm, uh, I'm sure. Conan, you Conan's never done anything bad to me. Conan's always been great. Every time, uh, you know, we've all, we've been together basically everywhere we go to, and uh, you know, we've all we, we've had some personal issues, but we've always been able to iron them out man to man, and that's what I respect about Conan. Conan. And what I respect about a lot about Conan is that he takes care of the boys, the Mexican boys. He always tries and does the best for them. Unfortunately, he, he can never accomplish what he wants to with them, you know, because of the situation. But Conan, inside, he is really a great guy. You know, uh, you know, obviously he's a businessman first and foremost, and will always take care of himself just like any other businessman will. But Conan is a he he is a class act. Uh, you agree? Vamp, Vamp, uh, I, personally as a as a as a friend, I love him. He's a nice guy. But as a business guy, as a businessman, uh, I wouldn't trust him. As far as I could throw him. And that's a shoot. I'm sorry, I love the guy, but business wise, he's, he's very different. All right, well, you know, I think a lot of people are like that. And, you know, he's not the only one that's like that. So I'm sure he's just looking out for himself. But I, I've just, I've dealt with too many uh, situations with him to where he's not straight up with me and I and he's he's uh God bless him. I don't want to talk bad about nobody. God bless. Him. You know, I just I just you know, he's a good guy, he's a good friend. I just don't trust him business wise. And Bob Barnett, I don't know enough about Bob Barnett to say anything bad or negative. And even if I did I wouldn't want to, you know. That's none of my business, and, and uh, you know, I got nothing to do with them, so I'd rather just stay out of that subject. Anything else, Matt? Yeah, uh, question for you, Dave. Why okay. is it that WCW will not let any of their boys on your show? You you have to ask them that question. I mean, for a while there, I, I think, you know, there's there's when I was at the, the the Pillman show not all that long ago, a couple of the guys asked to do it, and Vampiro actually did the show, and and Paige wanted to do it that night. Um, but I think that you know you have to ask them. I mean, it's I, I don't know that it's an outright ban. We actually have a, we actually have a couple of guys lined up, but I'm you know I don't I cross my fingers if they're going to be on. So. Um, <laughs> You know, I mean, it's it's the same thing. It's like you know, I you know, you know, I mean, since I was told that nobody would be on, you know, that we had Candido on, we had Mysterio on. So it's like, I don't know what I really don't know what the what the what the deal it is. It just seems like whatever the day is too. Yeah, because guys have been called up and said, you know, you cannot do the show, and then two days later, another guy from the company is on, and no one called them up and told them they couldn't do the show. So I don't. I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know what the situation is. I mean, obviously there have been guys who have been told, and you know, Hooventude was, you know, I, well, I've been wanting Hooventude on the show since the first day we did the show, just to give him a Hoobie chance Juice. to talk. Yeah, Hoovy Juice, and you know, for for various reasons, you know, mainly because he was living in Mexico, it was hard to pull it off. And then finally we got it arranged, and then that day, you know, they called up and said he couldn't do it, and uh, it was kind of disappointing, yeah. you know. But. Um, you know, as far as an answer as to why you gotta you gotta ask them. I don't know. Wow. Do you do you have a lineup for you know the next couple of weeks? Um, I mean, I know like uh, I know next week uh, we've got Cornette on Monday. <laughs> oh, I know we've got wow. Kurt Angle. We got Kurt, we got Kurt Angle tomorrow. We got um, Jerry Lynn Tuesday. I can I can give you the uh, the rundown, what, what, guys. Al, Al, why don't you run down everybody? It's uh, Kurt Angle tomorrow. Then we've got uh, Frank Shamrock is on Friday. 
Uh, next week is Jim Cornette on Monday, Jerry Lynn Tuesday, uh, Mike Mooneyham on Wednesday. Uh, Thursday Thursday's uh, going to be an archive because we'll be uh, en route to the Louisville Gardens because Friday we'll be uh, broadcasting live from there for the Jim Cornette Show. And then uh, Monday the 26th is Lenny Lane. Oh, really? And then tentatively for Thursday and Friday of that week, the 29th and 30th, it's uh, Shannon Moore and Gene Kaninsky. Hmm. That Lane interview is going to be very interesting. So I hear, because I, 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 uh, I heard that he was on uh, WCW Live, and they got rid of him, like, really quick. That's what I was told. I mean, I, I didn't, you know, that's, so, I don't know. Uh, just... One more question for you there, Eddie. Sure. Uh, what, what are your feelings about Crash Holly? Crash Holly? Yeah, Mike. Uh, in what way? Um, in the locker room. Crash Holly, I think he's, just, he's a great guy, man. <laughs> he's fun to be around. He is a character, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, he is. He's fun. You know, every guy I've met in in WWF has been great. They've treated not just myself, but uh, all of us with respect. I speak about Perry, uh, Malenko, and Benoit with respect. Uh, they all give us a lot, a lot of respect. And uh, they're just great guys, you know. They really are. So, yep. you know, be honest with you, I'm I'm happy again. I really am. I really am happy again. Okay, not not being able to predict the future. What was it like? I mean, and the reason I ask is because, you know, you've got kids at home, you're married, and you had a, a, a really well-paying, guaranteed job with WCW, even though as you could, you know, you were miserable a lot of the time. But but still, I mean, it was a a, a lot of money, it was great income, and it was yes, guaranteed. It was. And what was it like? Was it easy for you to leave? I mean, when 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 the time came and we and they made that decision, I, I was, or was it a really hard choice? No, it wasn't a hard choice. It was really easy. Um, okay. I'll be honest with you. I never expected it to happen because I had tried so hard before, and never they would never let us go. Uh, Eric would never let me go. You know, uh, Eric. We had had our spats before, but Eric, believe it or not, is a really good guy, and. Uh, you know, Eric is like, I'm a lot like Eric. We live our emotions. We show our emotions. And the thing with Eric, you know, I'll always be grateful to him, is that when I had my car accident, I had not signed my my uh, contract yet. And he still sent me that contract. And he took care of me. And I will be grateful to him for the rest of my life for that. And if he, if he was still there at WCW when that thing happened, I would have never left. Just out of loyalty to him because of what he did for me. But then again, I'm sure if he was there, he would have never allowed the situation to get out of hand the way it did with all of us. You know, because Eric knew he he wasn't using us to our potential. But he knew what he had in us. You know? He, he's not dumb. <laughs> he knew what he had in us. And I'm not saying that Bill Bush is dumb. He's, it's not that he wasn't... Uh, he's not, he, Bill Bush, is, he's a money man. He was there for, to you know, to economical reasons. He really didn't know what was going on as far as wrestling is concerned. And he had other people in his ear telling him what to do and he was listening to that you know but you know for people that don't think we didn't make an impact I mean look at it this way and I'm not Dave please correct me if I'm wrong and I'm not trying to boast or nothing you know you, you guys know me I'm the last guy that will boast if anything I believe in being humble because you know you know I'm a Christian or and 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 I believe in that but um uh, when we left, you know, the ratings in WWF, I mean, we drew an 8.1 when it was that, that four tag team match, even though yeah, I wasn't the ten, wrestling. The, the, ten, the, the ten man tag team like yeah, that. Yeah, you know, and, and we did draw a lot of attention. And not only that, things got switched around in WCW to where guys that never had opportunities before got their opportunity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So by us leaving, we did create some, I, I guess, some kind of wave, you know. 
Um, how was uh, this, this is from Sam Nord here who goes, uh, with all your wrestling talent, did you ever think you'd achieve your greatest fame simply by showing your personality after, especially after never being like, you know, labeled as like uh, the best interview in the wrestling? And how is it working with China? It's, it goes, it looks like you two are having a lot of fun out there doing the gimmick. I'm sorry, repeat yourself. Uh, uh, like, I'm. The people say I wasn't a good interviewer. And stuff well, like just no. What we said was, with all of your wrestling talent, did you ever think you'd achieve your greatest fame simply by showing your personality, uh, particularly because you were never like labeled like you know the world's best interviewer? And then I, was how was I was never. I never had a chance to do my personality. And when they when they did give me an interview, it was like, okay, what do I talk about? Oh, whatever you want. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, give me an idea. You know, they never gave me direction. Very few times that they gave me direction, and and when they did give me direction, if I didn't do it the way they wanted me to, they would get hot at me. You know, I mean, the only time I think I really did do some good interviews was when I was working against Chavo, and that's because I was having fun with it. And uh, I think I'm doing some decent interviews and having some fun with China. Uh, you know, so. Uh, I'm not saying that I'm a good interviewer because I'm not. I got a lot to learn as far as interviewing and 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 speaking on the mic. I mean, I'm the first one to admit that. But if anything, I want to learn and get better at it. But uh, to answer your question, Dave, yeah, I was never given the chance. Period. Over now. We also have a couple of winners of the trivia question. Oliver Postlewaite of Ottawa and Wes Vance of Kentucky. Uh, the question, Brian, you know the answer to that question? IWGP title. You got it right. That's really That's good. two posters in a row for me. That's right. Uh, we also got a couple of emails, a couple, a couple of notes. On the uh, King of the Ring main event, this was actually said at the, on SmackDown, but we did not bring it up at the, at the, on the show. Uh, the stipulations are that if Undertaker, Rock, and Kane win the match on the 25th, that the one who scores the pinfall will get the title shot at the July pay-per-view. If Vince, Shane, and Helmsley win, the winner of the King of the Ring tournament will get the title shot on the pay-per-view. Hmm. Helmsley, how about Helmsley against Jericho, Rock against Undertaker? How's that? Wow. Okay. Ideas? And I, just ideas. Uh, there's something else in here. Uh, I'm gonna ask Eddie this in just a second. Also, um, I, I think we have not mentioned this, but it is official that Sakosa, Silver King, Dandy, the Vianos, and Laparca were all given their release by World Championship okay. Wrestling. When did yeah. that happen? Uh, I guess it was officially today. I had heard about it this morning. That's ridiculous. Yeah. See, that's Isn't what I'm it though? About. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You got. Uh, tell me which one of those guys is not a good talent. Of those guys? Oh God, those guys are all those guys are all good talents. Especially, I mean, I mean, you, you know, what was amazing to me since, was since um, the beginning since they got there, all they did was just use them, you know. Yeah. And they weren't even given a chance. So that, Eddie, that just goes to show you the politics over there. Eddie, did you ever see the match with the Viano, uh, t the Viano three in um, Atlantis from? No, uh, but I heard it was phenomenal. I mean, it was it's so funny because I'm like watching this match and it, it's probably the, the best match I've seen all year certainly in the top two or three wow and I'm and I'm watching this and I'm going like you know his, his two younger brothers that wrestle in WCW um, I mean I think Viano four is maybe better than three I don't know you've wrestled them all so you would have a better opinion but I'm just thinking like those guys and and I understand that there's there's a whole roster of guys who can do this how can we never see it I know man I I don't want to start raising the issues here uh, but you know, hey, it's a good old boy network. Yeah. Take 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 it for what it's worth uh, when I say that. <clears throat> this is a question uh -huh. that I was going to that I was going to ask you this way, okay? Yeah. I was there four and a half years. I asked them to do things with me as far as the Latino market. <clears throat> when I when when they did the LWO, and I went to El Paso and California and Chicago and where there's a big Latino uh, Hispanic population they had no LWO shirts okay I had people asking me left and right I asked for interviews for Latin to do Latino stuff you know because you know just stuff in Texas and and California and just stuff just to help out the company not just for myself you know four years I never did that 
I mean, I've been here four months. I've been in the cover of Raw Magazine. You know what I mean? I mean all of us. The first month, I think it was. Uh, we were there four years. We never get that. I've already done a uh, an interview with TV Guide Latino. I've already done an interview with People Magazine Latino. It just goes to show you the difference of quality of uh, professionalism. And uh, I don't want to bring up or, like I said, raise any issues, but, you know, uh, I don't think uh, the color of your skin or, or, or the type of ethnic background you come from is an issue here in this company that I'm working for, which is WWF, to where it might be over there. You know, How's merchandising going? Huh? How's merchandising going as far as like t-shirts and that sort of thing? Uh, we're getting on that. Uh, the only thing is, uh, just that my shirt should be. Uh, we came out with those radical shirts. You got to remember that when we came in, uh, we came in at a spur of the moment. So like the radical shirts and all that, it took. You know, they rushed that. But, like, other people that come in, you know, they come in with, like, four or five months knowing ahead of time, so they get a chance to prepare for all of that. Mm-hmm. So when they do come in, they, they're they set. When we came in, we weren't set for that. And the, the what, we're, what, they, what I respect about them is, like, every shirt, they don't just get a shirt and throw it out there. They they go through, like, 18 people, and and everybody gives their opinion on it, and... They want to see what's going to be best as far as the sales is concerned, as far as the character is concerned, as far as where Vince wants to go with your character and stuff like that. And that's what I admire. So, you know, the, I think that's what's going on right now with our merchandising. Uh, not just speaking for myself, I'm speaking for, you know, the Chris, Dean, uh, Perry, and myself, is that our characters really haven't been established. I have a character... Uh, but it's really not established if you think about it. You don't know whether I'm a baby face or a heel yet. You know, really, if you think about it. You know, you'll have people cheering for China, and then the next minute they're yelling, Eddie sucks, Eddie sucks. And then the next minute, uh, uh, you know, she'll come up and knock the heck out of the guy, and I'll pin him, and they're all cheering for both of us. I mean, it's really weird, but at least we're getting a reaction, you know. So I think that's kind of what's going on. Uh, Chris Benoit obviously is working his ass off. Uh, he's producing, and man, what great matches is he having. I have nothing but the utmost respect for him. Perry, you know, Perry, they still don't know where they're going with him. I think Dean, they, they got an idea now for him, and it's just a matter of bringing it out. You know, so really, you know, we came in there... Uh, how do you say, we came in there knowing that we had been let go from over there and really kind of like, you know, the the, the storyline was like, we need a job, please give us a job, <laughs> you know, and now that we do have our jobs, they don't know where they're going with us really. I think they have an idea, but it's just not established completely. Kid, did did I make sense? <laughs> you, yeah. you know what I mean. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave. We 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 got we got to rush through these callers because we've got a full bank and we're gonna get through okay, as soon ahead. as we can. Go ahead. I'm so sorry. Let's, let's let's go in on callers. Just ask like uh, maybe one or two real quick questions because we're trying to get through as many as possible. John in Tampa, you're next up. Hey, what's up, buddy? Hey, what's going on? I just want to ask who's your favorite person to work in the ring with. Uh, Chris Benoit. Chris Benoit. Yep. Uh, I got some advice for you too. You said you needed to improve your interview skills, right? Yeah. You should um, get some old cactus jack tapes from ECW. <laughs> uh, old cactus what? Old cactus, cactus jack, jack tapes from ECW. Those are some interviews right there. All right, you're on. I'll do that. <laughs> All right, for the See advice. In WWF too, <laughs> Mick Foley interviews. Oh my God, the guys. Remember? Do you remember the interview he did right before uh, the the match where he retired, or even though he came back? I thought it was one of the best interviews I ever heard. Oh, he's, he's incredible, isn't he? Yeah, the Fantastic. one on Smack, the SmackDown interview. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go to Jamie in, in Alabama. Hi, Eddie. How you doing? Fine, Jamie. How are you? Pretty good. Um, I know you've been in w, WWF that long, but um, who uh, who has been your idol since you've been growing uh, when you were like 
in training and wrestling? Who were you wanting to be like or who inspired you as you were training? Who was my idol when I was training? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I always just admired my dad. Uh, not, I know the people aren't smart to my dad, but I saw a lot of my dad's old tapes. I admired hey, my one dad. More question. I admired oh. my brother Chavo a lot. Uh, obviously, my brothers, but my brother oh, Chavo. Who, really who had would you like to uh, wrestle me. or feud with? And uh, Ric Flair, believe it or not. I love it. I love his psychology. I've always liked his psychology. And Jamie, anything else? Uh, um, that's it. I appreciate it, Eddie, and good luck in the future. Thank you. Did you, were you, you know, since you brought up Ric Flair, were you disappointed that you never had a chance to do, like, any kind of a, a program with Ric Flair? Or, you well, know, I you did know? at the beginning, you know, but the, they never followed it through. I had a couple matches. I think I had, like, three or four matches, and I had some decent matches with them. I just wish that I could have kept on working with them. I mean, the man... The man can still go. He's phenomenal. I know people say he's old and all that, and a lot of people say once you've seen him, you've uh, once or twice you've seen it all. But believe it or not, uh, you know when you when he wants to go and turn it on, he can have one hell of a match. He really can, and and a different style of match. You know he oh, can oh. he can get anybody and go out there and have a match. That's what he can do. That's what I admire about him. He can have a match with anybody. With Vince Russo and with David Flair. With David Flair while handcuffed. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'll leave that one out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go that to Ricardo. That was pretty and... bad, uh, but that wasn't his fault. No, uh, he, he had a match with Vince Russo that was, was I would call, a miracle. Uh, I mean, I, it, wasn't like a gr you, it wasn't a great match, but it was with Vince Russo. I mean, what do you, you know, yeah. it was a miracle. Uh, you know, let's go to for Vince, you know, he's trying to do the best he can. Yeah. yeah, let's go to Ricardo in New York. Yes. Ricar Hi, Dave. Hi, Hi Brian. Hi, uh, Mr. Guerrero. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, uh, just a quick uh, question, a quick question, and and, and a comment. Uh, the question is, uh, could you tell us? Maybe you talked about this already. Uh, what is the difference between the uh, the, the WCW backstage? Uh, 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 environment uh, compared to the WWF backstage environment and Eddie I just uh, I'm gonna hang up uh, so I just want to tell you something in Spanish uh, usted es el mejor y no deje que nadie le diga lo contrario señor gracias <laughs> uh, to answer your question real quick uh, sure. it's the same thing uh, backstage the environment is fun and everybody's on the same team in mm -hmm. WWF and in WCW, everybody tore themselves. Not not everybody, but uh, I would say the top players are for themselves. And it's basically a, 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 den, of, a, a den of snakes. All right. Okay, Eddie, before we go, um, as far as the, the character that you now play, and there's been criticism of the character, uh -huh. um, what's your thoughts as far as... Um, you know, how much of that was, was your decision? How much of that was, was their suggestion? And how far... That was my decision. I just think it's, a, it's an entertaining character. I think it's kind of like a, like a Cheech and Chong character. Yeah. A wrestling Cheech and Chong. That's what I'm trying to do, really. And if people, people love Cheech, you know. So I just think it's entertaining. I mean, what do you guys want? You guys want to be entertaining, right? Now, as far as wrestling, you guys know I can wrestle. You know, I just want to be entertaining in a way that I can entertain outside of the ring. You know what I mean? And I've had that privilege of doing it with uh, with uh, China. And I think, uh, you know, a lot of people may be mad or say I'm being stereotyped. But how can you say that when, when you got guys doing, like Godfather, I mean, doing the pimp, you know, pimping gimmick. And, and you got... You know, all kinds of other stuff that I don't want to mention that are even more stereotyped than that. You know, it's just all I'm doing is being one of the guys of the neighborhood that I grew up in. So, you know, stereotyping, no, I'm just being myself. That's all. You know, being one of the, being one of my homies that I grew up with, really, that's what I'm doing. I just want to ask you, um, what are your thoughts? Because we've got a few emails about this one. It's regarding Kurt Angle. Because I mean, here's a guy who, you know, probably two years in the business. If you know, we've talked about this many times Phenomenal. on the show. I've, I've seen so very Phenomenal. few guys in my life 
would that little experience take to this business the way he has? Phenomenal. That's all I can say. Phenomenal. I would love to work and angle them. I've worked a couple matches with them. I think they've been pretty good. Uh, I know that if I were to get some more chances with him, I know we could have some hellacious matches because uh, we just get that. You know, you know there's certain wrestlers you gel with, and uh, I feel that I have a good gel with him. Um, that is pretty much. We're running low on time. Eddie, I want to thank you very much, Brian. Anything quick for for Eddie before we gotta go? When do we get the Eddie Guerrero's My Favorite Wrestler T-shirt? All right, everybody's been telling me that, and I'm gonna go ahead and come out with that. But I gotta do it in in my character, so I gotta think of something a little different. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, girl, is my favorite wrestler as long as Mama Cita's on the side. <laughs> what, uh, I got, what, what, you know, as far as like, I, I, was, there, was there any reservations as far as like, you know, like like your real life as far as like uh, the China thing, or was it just like to you, it's like this is just part of the entertainment act and it's no big deal? No, of anything, I uh, before I did anything, I talked to my wife about it, <laughs> and uh, she, uh, uh, the good thing it was Joni, uh, China was so professional. She's such a professional. And she's a, such a sweet girl that she even talked to my wife personally and, uh, you know, made sure, you know, gave her confidence and, and made sure that everything was going to be cool. You know, so thank God for that. And I'm so, happy working with her. She's, she's, she's great. She tries hard. She's always, you know, she's a constant professional. That's all I, I, I can say nothing bad about her because she tries so hard, and she's always there. Okay, we are totally out of time. I want to thank you very much, Eddie, for doing the show, and I want to remind everyone that tomorrow we're going to have Kurt Angle on, so it should be quite an interesting show as well. So it's been a hell of a week here on Wrestling Observer Live, and we'll see you tomorrow at 6.